Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at a very rare computer kit, the Sharp MZ40K, the first in the MZ range from Sharp, released in Japan in May 1978 for 24,800 yen. The kit did also make its way to Germany as there are photos online of the German version but I've been unable to find further information such as the release date and price. This video will focus on the Japanese version but it should be very similar to the German counterpart. The MZ40K it would appear was aimed at the younger generation to teach the basics of computing, although you cannot program the kit as you would a proper computer such as the Sharp MZ80K, also released in 1978. Instead, the MZ40K has more focus on construction. The few features once assembled include displaying the time, playing music and games, and calculating phone charges. There were a couple of add-ons that could be purchased separately. A sensor kit MZ40K1, music organ kit MZ40K2, as well as an unreleased timer kit. As of 2025, I only came across a few eBay listings of the MZ40K, all from Japan, both in assembled and unassembled forms. The kit I bought is like new and appears to only be missing the registration card. Due to the high cost of the kit and importing it from Japan, I will not be assembling it as much as I love to, as it would severely devalue it. Of course, if I can get hold of an assembled kit, then I can demonstrate it. However, even before I got this kit, I started to recreate it despite the challenges, but now I have my own MZ40K, that of course will help me build in my own version. So here we have the manual. A bit tricky to fit it in at this angle but this is the Japanese version of course which has a different front to the German version it's a bit reflective uh, but I will be scanning this anyway so you can have a proper look if you want to inside we have what appears to be an after sales um, service uh, contact sheet Again, I'll, I'll be scanning all of this in so you can have a better look. Uh, part way through the manual, there's this supplementary sheet where I've got the light directly ahead so you can see the kit well, but unfortunately it reflects everything that's white. Now, there we go, that's a supplementary sheet. And also what was in the manual are the game sheets. So this one is a hunting one. From my understanding you don't really program the games as such, it's just to do with luck. You just program in some numbers and then roll electronic die. But I need to properly read through the manual and see how it works. So this is the racing one. Again apologies for the reflection. There's only way I could illuminate uh, the kit well enough. And this is a reference card, which I think lists all the different features uh, that you can do. This is the front panel, which has a acrylic backing. Here is the PCB. I'm even going to try and scan this in as well, if you want to make your own version, because I do plan to make my own version of the kit, so I can keep this one un unassembled and assemble the uh, my version. Now this is the insides of the top layer. So we have a bunch of components. These are mainly the components uh, that you need to solder. There's even some solder as well. So we have things like resistors, capacitors, uh, chips, and so on. One particularly interesting part is this package here. Let's close that a moment. Um, so, I don't know how clear this is going to come up, but the Japanese basically says that these devices can be damaged by static electricity and to handle them lost. And then if I show you again, I'm not sure how clear this is going to come up. We've got two RAM chips and this is the main chip. So the main chip is based on the Fujitsu MB8843 4-bit microcontroller. It has 1024 bytes of mask ROM and 64 bytes of RAM. 
Now you can't extract the mask ROM, which is essentially a firmware, or at least you're not supposed to be able to. I'm going to look into that. But this uh, chip, the original Fujitsu chip, was used by a number of manufacturers in arcade machines, um, tape drives, disk drives, and so on. So that each one would have their own firmware. And that does mean that at least for the arcades that use this chip, we do have the chip emulated in the MAME emulator. So that's handy if you want to recreate the chip. So if we look at the bottom layer. Okay. So in the bottom layer has mainly mechanical parts, okay? And these are the side pieces, which the PCB, the top piece, and the reference card uh, sits in. And this is the, uh, they're called labels, I think, that sit between the key and the key covers, I think they call them. Um, or the, uh, the German version is different, it has the so Raimi, so far Lati uh, written on it, and then the Japanese version has the equivalent written in Japanese. Um, and here we have the power supply, which is 4.3 amps, which seems very high. I wonder if Sharpless used their own power supply they had handy, and over the German version, they made a different version, as the German power supply is only 700 milliamps. Do you have any experience with the MZ40K? Please let me know in the comments. Do check out my site linked in the video description to learn more about the MZ40K.